What's going on, everyone? It's Tom Tran and Kevin Fabris coming at you with episode 12 of Marketing with Tran and Fabris. And on today's episode, it's going to be the first episode of a multi-episode series all around campaign strategies, specifically around lead generation for, quite frankly, any type of a local business or um, even a coaching or consulting business, right? So what we want to do is be able to give you an in-depth breakdown of the um, overlying topics that you're going to want to basically look at and how to not just define them and understand them, but then how to monitor the campaign's um, health and to probably just set up your foundations. So uh, this series is going to be great for um, digital marketing agencies, marketing consultants, and also for local business owners as well that want to just understand how uh, the building blocks are for um, successful campaign um, strategies and uh, just from soup to nuts, kind of just how we set up, run and optimize uh, different campaigns. So without further ado, Kevin, what is up, my brother? Not much, man. Not much, man. Um, yeah, thanks. That was a great intro. And and basically, just to kind of double back on that, um, whenever people are setting up campaigns, it is really, really easy to get past you know, this the strategy session, the actual build out, because you've done it so many times, you kind of know what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, time and time again, it's been proven to me that if you kind of go through all of the steps and lay out exactly what you're trying to accomplish, who you're trying to attract, you know, the type of offer that's going to resonate with them, uh, you're just going to get better results. And, uh, and on top of getting better results, you're also going to know if something doesn't work and something is always not going to work. It lets you know what part of your campaign that you can adjust to make uh, to make sure that you're profitable basically each and every time. Uh, so, so breaking down a full campaign, it is a ton. There's a lot of stuff, you know, basically that's a four-year degree. Uh, but what we've done is we've broken it into segments. We'll get through as many as we can in each episode, try to keep them around 20, 25 minutes. Uh, and then hopefully it'll give you a real deep understanding of what we're looking at. And if you need to break down and have any extra questions, you can actually let us know in the comments down below. And we'd love to direct you to all the materials uh, that will help you kind of uh, not only get started, but but actually dominate you know, on your campaigns in digital marketing or as a business owner. Um, so the things we want to touch on today are essentially the importance of defining goals before you get started, the type of goals that you want to track. Uh, and then we're going to show you a tool that that we use in our agency um, that basically lets us visualize all of the KPIs that we're looking for, all of the strategy actually in place so that we, one, know why it's working, know if it's working, and then know what to change if if it's less than desirable. Uh, so let's kind of get right into that. Uh, Tom, why is it important to define the goals uh, that you're looking to accomplish before you get started? Yeah, great question. Uh, one way that I always kind of um, think about it is, uh, unless you know where you're going, how would you know when you get there, or if you ever get there? Right. Think about it like using maps, right? You need to know and enter in the destination. So then you can, so then, you know, one of the app can find the best route for you, but then at least you know what to kind of expect, right? So I think that's important. And also um, you want to make sure that you inspect what you expect, right? That's basically step two. So as a business owner, if you are running these campaigns on your own, this is going to give you great insight. If you are a business owner that is overlooking a team, whether it's an outside third party, or someone internal, these are the things you want to look at as your core overarching metrics, right? So defining that outcome or that destination. Um, and some of the things that you want to look at is something that um, I had picked up from Dan Kennedy years ago, right? Think about it, no matter what channel that you're trying to market on, whether it's digital um, or non-digital, traditional, print, radio, doesn't matter what it is, right? You want to consider the three M's, right? And the three M's are message, right? What are you saying? Market, who am I saying it to? And then media. Media is what channels am I putting that message or that ad um, campaign out on, right? Within those three M's, you should have a more of a solid blueprint of just the foundational ingredients that you need, right? And then we can carry on from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, the chance of you actually accomplishing that are crazy because you, you don't really know when to stop. So this is one of those things that I think is super important, especially when talking to clients. Um, a lot of times they'll just say like, Hey, we just need exposure. You know, just if more people knew about us, then we'd be doing great with this. Right. Uh, or we just want to do like awareness campaigns. 
if anybody ever says that to me, I stop it right away because it's not true. Nobody wants awareness. Nobody wants exposure. People want more business, right? So basically, whenever I construct a campaign, I make sure that the destination is whatever actually pays off for them. Uh, in both of our agencies, we basically run lead generation as as like our um, like our key deliverable. So generally there, what we do is we break down every campaign into uh, a series of KPIs that if we hit those KPIs, it's going to be profitable for somebody. Like we decide essentially the destination is a repeat customer. That's what you want, right? So then you have to break down all of the steps before there, like your you know, cost for a repeat customer, a cost of customer acquisition, uh, your meeting sales percentage, your booking percentage, your landing page conversion, take that back. It's your cost per click. And even before that, it's your click through rate or your impressions, right? So like mapping out the campaign in your head from a digital marketing perspective and deciding what each of those things should cost is something that I think is absolutely essential um, because I know it in a campaign, if if I map it out that way and my cost per click is supposed to be $2, you can just do the math. And that means if everything remains even, you know, in this example, my cost per lead should be 30. My cost per lead should be 15, whatever, right? But if I switch that cost per lead from $2 to $4, you know, that's going to throw all the other numbers completely out of whack if they remain the same. So that means like now your cost per acquisition instead of being 30 would be 60, right? Like it's it's a process that lets you kind of define what you're looking at and how to actually get there. Um, it, like we said, it, it's a road mark there and uh, essentially just lets you know what's going good and what's not going good. So uh, basically we just got into some of those KPIs and I know that's kind of a, that's us talking shop, I guess. Not everybody can, not everybody knows these uh, abbreviations off the top of their heads or whatever. So Tom, let's kind of get into it. We'll, we'll break down kind of what each KPI it is that we look for in a lead gen campaign, and then, you know, maybe elaborate on the importance of them as well. Yeah. So, I mean, just going back to just the whole concept of message market media, your three M's, right? Understand, uh, like, before we get in, into any of the data or the definitions of these things, right? Understand um, who you're talking to. How big of a marketplace do you have in terms of potential uh, new customers or clients, right? In your given uh, business, right? So you know, hey, like this is what, how big of a pool of an audience I have, right? And from there, at least you have a baseline of how many people um, you're starting with. So you know, right? And then outside of that, like, what are you trying to say to them? What's that message that's catering to that specific audience, right? What is your offer? Like, ultimately, your offer trumps all, right? Everything else, that is the first domino that is going to make or, make or break anything else. So if you think about it just from a very simplistic standpoint, right? Message, market, media. How big is my market? What am I saying to them? What is the offer that I'm putting in front of them? Right. And then the way in which I'm putting that in front of them, that's where all the, the media kind of comes into. Right. So from that standpoint, thinking about these terms when it comes to any type of a plan, right. Click through rate or CTR. Let me back up before that. Kevin had said KPIs a few different times. Right. KPI is an acronym for key performance indicator. Right. So what are your KPIs or key performance in, uh, um, indicators when you're looking at, um, you know, just judging the health of a lead generation campaign? So here are some of the terms that you want to understand. CTR, click-through rate, is measuring the percentage of people clicking on your ad or link, right? Meaning how many people saw it and how many people that saw it actually clicked on a link or clicked on the ad, right? That's your click-through rate, right? It's a, it's a function of math. Um, clicks. Yeah, to so, go ahead. Or sorry. Um, with the click-through rate, basically the things that I try to keep in mind is if you think about it, if 100 people see your ad and three people click, you have a 3% click-through rate, right? It's simple math, just like Tom said right there. Um, as a general rule, especially on meta platforms, uh, really across all platforms, if you have a click-through rate that's higher than three, um, providing the rest of your funnel works, you are always good to go. Like that means your offer is awesome. Your creative is awesome. Uh, that is a really good click-through rate. That's always what I set as my bar. Uh, I set the lower end of my click-through rate at around one. 
right? If if it's a high ticket item, you know, below one may work. But essentially, if if my click through rate is less to one, what that tells me is the thing that I have to fix is the actual ad. And more importantly, it's maybe the start of the ad, right? Because that means my view time is probably low and probably people just aren't really vibing with whatever it is we're offering, whether it's the color, the way that it starts, whatever it is, that ad is not working. So if that, you know, to, to just kind of put a, a button on that, if your click-through rate is above, you know, three, 5%, you're doing awesome because one in 20, you know, think about the way you use social media. I don't stop one in 20 ads I see. Actually, Tom, if, if you see a hundred posts on social media, how many do you stop and actually interact with? Mm, not that many yeah i think it's cynical after a few years you know like no i think it's it's probably consistent right now you know like i'd be less than one for sure yeah for sure anyways yeah let's uh let's move on to clicks per site yeah so clicks the site track the number of visitors landing on your website right so there's click through rate and then actually landing onto the site itself right how many people are you, how many people are going onto your site based off of how many, however you're sending traffic there, right? That's literally what it is, right? Clicks to site. Is there any other way to define that? Uh, no, but I think maybe what's good to mention here is a lot of times you'll look at just clicks. Now clicks is something that's something like uh, say meta, um, Google uses it as well. Uh, but say in the meta example, clicks is tracked by when somebody just expands your ad as well right if they just want to read what's in the caption or if they just want to maybe turn the sound on on the video or you know any interaction at all that results in a user clicking is counted as a click that's why the actual measurable one is how many people are clicking out to the site right so that's who's interested in your actual lead gen campaign it's very different and then like the follow-up metric from that is landing page visitors Right, because there's always going to be a discrepancy between your clicks to site and your landing page visitors. That would do be because of like uh, low site load times, um, slow site like uh, slow site load times. I can't say that phrase, um, or or a number of other things, right? But but essentially, clicks to site lets you know is your ad working? What percentage of people are clicking through? That's how the click through rate is actually designed. Uh, and then that's a number I put a dollar value on, right? If my clicks to site is, you know, in, in many campaigns, I run it at $2. You know, if it's more expensive than that, I know I have to change the ad. If it's less expensive than that, um, then I know we're, we're good to go there. And then any issues might be showing up farther down in the funnel. So, you know, just to kind of preface this as well with Kevin's metrics, right? Um, it's going to vary across industries. So just keep that in mind as well. You know, like when you hear $2, when I hear $2 and maybe, for example, for like, say, a DUI attorney in San Francisco, um, your AdWords average cost is $95 plus per click, right? A $2 clicks to site in that sense is amazing, right? So mm -hmm. always have that understanding in place too for your own industry. Like, what is that? What are those averages? And a simple place you can go look, maybe uh, just Google, right? To understand that as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, some things to think about. So I guess uh, the next thing is going to be looking at landing page conversion rate. What does that mean, right? Effectively, how we have that definition here is calculate the percentage of visitors converting into leads on the landing page. So it's simple math, right? In the context of how many people landed on the landing page and then took an action, right? Whatever action it is that you're asking them to take, whether it's fill out a form, call a number, whatever that is, right? You want to look at that math. Total number of people that got there, how many people took action? And that would be your conversion rate, right? Mm -hmm. And now, Tom, on a landing page, what is it that actually goes into the conversion rate? So like the written content, the offer, what what else would go into that? Yeah, there's there's obviously there's congruency, right? No one wants to be uh, bait and switched. So you think about where that the person came from. If they saw an ad, the ad spoke to them and they clicked on that ad and that ad took them to the landing page. Make sure that the landing page is saying the same thing that your ad is and just it, if they're right, effectively expanding on that, right? So um, when it comes to the landing page in itself, make sure that, Kevin, you had said this earlier, your speed load time is quick. It's optimized for both mobile and desktop. But then the messaging more than anything is playing to the person that you're talking 
talking to? Message and market, right? Who are you talking to? What is that offer? What is that problem that they have that you can solve for them so that you are essentially the uh, guide in their hero's journey? I have this itch. I have this problem. Can you know, Kevin or Tom's company or this landing page, can this company actually help me solve that problem? Right. And if so, how do I, how do I raise my hand and say, I'm interested in, in having you help me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's presenting the offer in a really easy way that users can digest. That congruency was a huge point. Make sure your ad looks like your landing page, you know, like if it doesn't make sense or if your ad is too vague and sounds too awesome, but your landing page has all the details, you know, that that would be a reason that people kind of uh, uh, choose not to take action. Yeah, absolutely. Now, like it's tough to say uh, in a lead gen campaign uh, what what a page can convert at because that's 100% on the offer and the industry. Uh, with a good enough offer, if, you know, you could see conversion rates, you know, upwards of 20, 25% if it's the right kind of promotion. Uh, but for high ticket items, you know, something kind of at two, three percent, it's still a winning campaign, right? It's it's just important to know the rest of the numbers, right? Yeah. And just for a kind of reference and definition, high ticket item, right? It's something more than just like, say, an impulse buy. So if you got to sit back and actually consider this, maybe do some research on that vendor, right? That service provider, um, whatever it is, before you make a decision, those are things that are considered high ticket. So that could be anywhere from a couple hundred dollars, right? Upwards of tens of thousands of dollars. So think about it from that standpoint. It's like, you're not going to do an, an extensive amount of research on say like an impulse buy that might be $9, $10, maybe even 17 to 20 bucks, right? But you will take a step back, do a sniff test, do some research on something that may um, run you a couple hundred dollars in uh, upwards to, to a few thousand, right? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's 100% different. And that's a lot of the times why you have to make that definition between lead gen and e-com agencies. And, and, you know, it's just defining what your objective is right now. Our next point that we have here is your appointment booking percentage. This is when it goes from marketing to sales. This is the handoff. Um, this is where the planning actually becomes more important because typically everything in the first couple steps is what we do as marketers. But when we have to hand it off to sales teams or the business owners, you know, that's where, where we lose our, our expertise here. So our appointment booking percentage, essentially what that does is it measures the number of leads versus the number of appointments. If a hundred people became leads, put their hand up, said, I want this offer but only 10% of them showed up to their sales call or, or meeting or trial lesson, you know, that is your appointment booking percentage there. Um, when we're discussing this, there's a ton of tools that you can use. Um, SMS, you know, drift campaigns, you know, we get into that all the time. Uh, there's lots of ways to influence it, but at the same time, like if you can't get these people on the phone, these people are not going to buy anything from you. So Tom, can you think of any reasons like why people wouldn't be, you know, that put their hand up and say like, I want this offer. But a lot of times business owners have trouble getting hold of those people. Yeah. Why is their appointment booking percentage low? Yeah. I mean, it could be anything from the psychology of that actual buyer uh, to um, the urgency, right? Oftentimes, if you think about it, there is going to be a gap between a lead that's generated to an actual appointment that shows up. So one thing you may want to think about is just commitment level, right? Your service. If your product or service is quote unquote considered more high ticket, what can you do to encourage that person to show up? One, oftentimes, if you think about it from more of a pessimistic standpoint, people love to buy. They don't like being sold. So mm -hmm. the just overall um, picture or concept of an appointment with someone, right? Where your product or service is more just high ticket or more just say personal, Oftentimes people know that, uh, you know, that assumption that's taking place is I don't want to get sold on this appointment. So I may or may not want to show up. I just kind of don't want to see what this is about. I, got, I just want to put my foot in the water and just test those things. Right. So that's mm. one thing to consider. Another thing to consider also is like making sure that, um, and there's other ways, there's many ways to do this, but making sure that your possible follow-up sequence, right. To get them to show up um, is dialed in as well. Cause oftentimes people are busy right? You may sign up for an appointment that you booked, but if there's no reminders, life happens. People are going to forget. So mm -hmm. how can you be proactive in that, in that journey, right? Yeah. And also, you know, like you said, at certain times, I really want something. 
you know, like they're right there. I need this new software. You know, I can't figure out how to follow up with people. So if you call me right away, if your speed to lead is really good, yeah, you're going to get this appointment booked. But if I don't hear from you for a few days because your follow-up sequence isn't good, your appointment booking percentage is way down. Um, now, next, after you actually book people into their call, into their appointment, into their trial lesson, how many of them actually come back? How many of them actually pull out their credit card and say, I want your service? That is your sales percentage. One of the most vital vital statistics for any organization um, and something that there is billions and billions of websites and books and pages of content. Like there's no shortage of, of information on how to increase your sales percentage. Um, Tom, do you have anything that we kind of left out on sales percentage or do you want to get straight into fulfillment? I mean, sales percentage is going to vary across different industries. Again, know your own industry, right? Um, oftentimes too, if you're a consultant or if you're a business owner that hasn't done any type of cold traffic, quote unquote, lead generation campaign, right? You may have the mis, uh, uh, you know, misnomer of the fact that um, one common objection that we hear in, in, in our world is uh, these internet leads don't work, right? Uh, mainly because the difference is you may be taking that business owner from a place where most of their business has come from referrals and not from working cold leads, if you will, right? There's a different cadence, different conversation that happens. A referral is going to be a lot closer, right, to um, a, a deal because of that warm transfer of trust and, and the fact that it is a referral as opposed to someone that knows maybe nothing about you, right? So they may be problem and solution aware, but they may not be your unique solution aware. So those are some things to think about. Does your sales team or you, are you how how many reps, how comfortable are you with taking on this new type of um, uh, lead into your business, right? And if you're not, you're going to have to understand that um, it's a new skill set. It's a new um, muscle that you're going to need to train when you look at those naturally, right? Would would you agree or disagree, right? Mm -hmm. um, your sales percentage is going to be higher from a referral than it would be from someone that doesn't know you. Think about it from that standpoint, right? Nine times out of 10, when you talk to a business owner who's never done any kind of lead generation campaigns and they've only done referrals, you know, when you say, what's your sales percentage? Like the answer you're getting is like 80%, 75%. When you talk to somebody who's like, you know, some of the most savvy salespeople in the world, you know, they're telling you that their percentages is like 10%, right? Because it's, that's cold traffic versus referral, you know, and even 10% in, in a big enough industry, that's, that's pretty tough, you know, like, to, to be fair, not everybody's ready at every time. Your sales percentage, though, is essentially, you could argue, the most important statistic, right? Yeah. Ultimately, if you can get people on the phone and sell them what you're trying to get, that that's how money comes in, right? Uh, one often overlooked step here is the fulfillment percentage, right? Like, this is the amount of people that tell me, yeah, I want a website versus actually have a website built. There's a huge variance there, right? Because a lot of people want a website, but not everybody wants to pay thousands of dollars to get it done properly, right? Or not every, and it's not on them. They still want it, but it may not be the right time for them in their business, right? Uh, people can, fa can fall off here for a number of reasons. Maybe you're not taking a deposit. Uh, maybe the time between your actual sales call and and the billing procedure is too long or your onboarding sequence is messy or just they turn around and they tell their spouse and their spouse is like, nah, you can't pay $7,000 for marketing help or whatever, whatever it is in this example, right? Um, it gets everybody, everybody's, as a business owner, you've probably been on both ends of this many times. Uh, and then the last thing that I, I track not necessarily on a campaign by campaign basis, but just as like a general overall health thing. If, if say, for example, you sell cars and if a person buys a car off you once, you have historical data that says they're probably going to buy their next car and their next car off you. You know, like the average return customer rate is like 2.5 or something like that. Um, you can't really count that on your initial report because things happen. You can't count money that you don't have in your pocket yet, but that is like extremely valuable information to have and to share with your client or, you know, even in your own kind of campaign, right? Because future money is still good money to have rolling in. Um, is there anything I'm, I'm leaving out there for like re repeat business? 
Um, for repeat business, no, I would say also think about the season that someone's in. Kevin, you had touched on this earlier. Um, not everyone is ready to buy right now or that impulse buy or, you know, that feeling of buying that thing when they opted in may have gone away. Life may have gotten, gotten, you know, in, in front of them or gotten to them. Right. So you're thinking about it from that standpoint of like say multiple purchases, right. Um, the timing of that may be, um, off for whatever reason, it may not be you or the offer. It just might be timing in their life or circumstances, timing and circumstances changes all. So when it comes down to that, it's important to have a follow-up or nurturing sequence in place because that person that you're acquiring as a new lead or a, a new lead and ultimately a new customer, think about it from that standpoint. If I am going to go out to the people store and get new people, right, for my for my offer, then um, what does that cost to get new people versus the cost to get the same people that I have to come back and buy something, um, either come back, come for the first time, right, because I've already acquired their information or come back multiple times, Okay. Mm, absolutely absolutely because yeah future money is, is still money you know you can't spend it just yet but to to know you're doing a good job that's also a, a real indicator of of how you deliver your product right if they keep coming back you're doing a good job of actually fulfilling them um basically once we break down these statistics that all work into a digital marketing campaign like these are the goals or the kpis that we track so that we can hit the goals that we're defining Right. The next thing I do, we know we're going to track all of these numbers and then we just kind of go through the process, you know, and we look at those those statistics like on a fake campaign. We're going to look at a click through rate. OK, well, what do we want our click through rate to be? Realistically, it's going to be one and a half to two percent. That's our sweet spot. If it's above that, we leave it alone. If it's below one, we have to update our ad um, clicks to site, you know, a number. You know, this is actually just a reflection of your cost per click, cost per click to site, right? So in my head, this is one that I use a ton, depending on the campaign that really kind of breaks down, you know, the health of, of the actual ad you're running. Uh, and then as you're going through just a little bit further, say for your, on your clicks per site, the goal you may be putting out is say uh, $2 per click that makes everything else work your landing page percentage. You don't have to be accurate, but if you know your landing page percentage, your landing page is going to convert at between a certain rate. If you expect it to be about 10%, then it lets you know that if it's converting significantly lower, there's a problem with your page or a problem with your offer, the problem with the way you're convert, you're distributing it, right? So before we start, we take all of those KPIs that we just mentioned and we put either a a dollar value or a numerical value beside it that's based on projections we've done in the past. Nothing is ever consistent, but you know, by by putting numbers to the theory, it lets me know what to adjust in the first couple of days. You know, and and some of these are going to be positive, some of these are going to be negative, some of them are going to be way better than you thought, and some are going to be way worse than you thought. But hopefully, if everything hits, you're going to get your you know, your cost per sale or your cost per repeat customer in range with what you're really looking for. Um, just to finish up here briefly, Tom, like after we set all of those stuff up, have a huge understanding of, of the numbers we're trying to get. Uh, and if we can just kind of go into a screen share right now, yep. what I always do is I, um, I search for an online calculator, an online ROI calculator, essentially. Um, there's hundreds of these online, just search online ROI calculator free. Uh, and they'll, you'll get something like this that essentially, you know, like we just said, you know, if our click through rate is, you know, 3% and visits to the site, you know, essentially we need a hundred of them visits to lead. This is your landing page conversion. So we're going to say seven of them. You know, this is your the number of leads, your lead conversion rate. Let's say you're at thirty five percent, and then essentially, if you work through these calculators, you know, as you're looking at it, you know, everything is going to fluctuate with everything, right? So, if you just basically put your information in here, and one of them is significantly out of whack, like on this fake example, I've said our cost per lead is $142, but our cost for customer is 408. If that makes sense for your client, great. Um, but at the same time, if when you actually launch your ad, if your click-through rate isn't working at 3% and if it's at you know, 0.5%, sorry, 0.5%, 
know, as you go farther and down through, well, obviously it's not, <laughs> it's not working out here. Uh, but as you, as you go farther through, none of the num none of the other numbers actually work out. So what that should have done is affect this here, right? So your, your visits would have dropped by like 60%. So that would go down to like 25. And as you do that, your return on everything becomes much more expensive, right? So definitely not only define your goals, but set them up and then uh, measure them. Use a, an online calculator so you can visualize it, so you can show it to your clients before you launch. Um, and then also like show it to your team so that everybody's on board and they know that all the different contributions from all of the different steps, whether they're the sales team, the graphic designers, the video editors, uh, the you know the receptionist who sets up the calls, all of that kind of stuff, they all matter. It's a chain. Uh, and, and these tools are a great way of actually visualizing that. Um, anyways, Tom, before we finish up today, is there anything else you think we should touch on in episode one of our strategy for online campaigns series? No, I think that's it. I think it's a great, uh, we did a great job in just kind of unpacking those elements. Um, if it gets a little bit too, uh, you know, complicated for you, simply look for an online calculator that Kevin had talked about. And all of those things were going to be neatly organized for you in the way and the formulas are going to be there as well, right? So it's just getting your foundation dialed in. So they either, you know how to inspect what to expect or having your team member um, be able to drive and work through these things. Yeah, got to know your numbers. You want to win, you got to know the numbers. All right. Anyways, Tom, always a pleasure. Episode number 12 in the books. Come back next week. We're going to talk about defining an audience um, and, and maybe make it farther than that in the sequence. All right. See y'all. All right. Take it easy.